There we go. And the eyeball has shown up. So I'm going to get this started. Welcome in, everybody, to Punk Rock Saves Lives PMA session uh, for March 24th. I, for some reason, put 224 when I put it in the computer today. But uh, I, that could have been just a big, fat finger. Um, but welcome in, uh, and I hope everybody is doing great wherever you are. I hope things are starting to open up and um, you're still being safe, but everything's opening up and we can get back to this world of uh, fun and touring and punk rock and all that fun stuff. And at least even being able to go to the go to the park or beach with your family. You know, there's all sorts of stuff looking up. So um, got to introduce everybody. I'll start um, to my lower part. Here is Mackenzie with me as usual. My co-host with the most. What's going on down there in Albuquerque this week? Everything been good or? Uh, things have been good. It was absolutely beautiful weather until today, which I haven't actually been keeping up with the weather because I was like, oh, it's finally nice. You know, I don't really need to worry about anything. And I woke up to snow and 35 mile an hour mm. winds and everything being icy. Actually got hit in the head by a chunk of ice that blew off my roof. Um, so that's super fun. Was not expecting that. The puppy got spayed this week, so... I took, took time off to take care of her and all that. She's uh, she's yeah. getting cute, cute, and cuter by the second. <laughs> Mag Maggie saw. You the haven't met her. I don't know. If, I don't know if cuter is necessarily Ma the Maggie's word. Maggie's picture of your dog in the wearing the cone, and <laughs> she did this like perfect impression. Dog when he's like, I do not like the cone of shame. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Her face. It is no good. I was just, oh my god. Yeah, you sent me a picture, and it looked like, like the first words out of my mouth were "dopey." I know. Yeah, yeah. She was, she was definitely feeling it, but now she's back to being a puppy, which makes my job a lot harder. I'm gonna, I, as normal, I throw up some uh, comments. I don't know if you can see them, but uh, Nick has joined us in. Nick run, Nick runs one of the pulley groups on Facebook, so he's he's a big fan. Oh, Scott, I texted. Through Dally, I texted you a picture of a guy's leg with the album cover on it. Uh, yeah. A while back, that's him right there, Nick Zabetta. So. Oh, awesome! He's got the best, the best pulley tattoo I've seen. So. Yeah, cool. That's, um, and then a bunch of people are jumping in, so that's rad. Uh, to my, I don't know, this way. There we go. Is my brother Dan our our mental health advocate? How's things over there in Chicago today, sir? Things are going great. It's quite rainy, but we've been having some great sunshine. Um, found out recently work will be supplying um, the vaccine, so that's awesome. So I don't have to schedule or what? go out of my way. That's oh, welcome. Cool. welcome to retail. Welcome um, to Frontline. Yeah. Sick, though. Also true. So I, I do get paid time off to receive my vaccine, which is cool. But That's actually awesome to hear. I bet that's probably more rare than... No one. Yeah, awesome. but your but your work gets it and is just giving it to you, and I kind of I'm still sitting here waiting. <laughs> I get. So I trade I get, you. I would trade you. I get my second dose on uh, next Saturday, not this Saturday, but next Saturday. So I'll get second dose, and that's the one that supposedly is the doozy. So I'm waiting to find out. Um, crossing way over, our brother Leland is. Uh, I went the wrong way. There you go. That's okay. I, it's backwards. <laughs> it's backwards. I I never get used to that. Uh, Leland is our artist liaison for Punk Rock Saves Lives, helps us uh, get all those amazing bands for the compilations, and uh, when we get back to doing tours and we can put our own festival together, you'll be looking at us, too, trying to figure it all out. How is everything up there in the Leland house? things going with you? Oh, in, 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 in Massachusetts, it's good. We, we, uh, I always want to say Connecticut. I'm sorry. You know what, man? Connecticut is like is like three miles in that direction. Because I I'm in, I'm in Western Massachusetts, so yeah, it's good, man. It's usually really it's usually really cold here this time of year, and it's been unseasonably warm. So uh, Mackenzie got our weather, I think, this mm -hmm. uh, today, and, and we've just yeah. had uh, yeah had some really nice weather. And Massachusetts is really really slow with the the vaccine rollout. Um, oh hi, Sinead. Yeah, they you know they they're 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 kind of taking it. They're being real methodical and slow about it. So they're like oh, okay. Everyone that's 98 years old has had one. Let's go for the 97-year-olds. So people in the retail and on the front line and cops, firefighters, EMTs and stuff are, are, are getting it, but they're getting it real slowly. So I'm kind of hoping they get that together and pick it back up. But, uh, yeah, it's, uh, it's 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 pretty good here for the most part. That's awesome. Um, 
I did want to point out before I introduce our amazing guest, I'm, I'm so stoked I can't see straight, but uh, uh, Kieran is in and he's calling it, he's, he's watching us from the UK, so it's probably pretty late there. So uh, Kieran, what are you doing awake so late? But Kieran's got some new music out, so make sure you check out Kieran and post your links here in the thing for everybody to check out Kieran. Um, but it is with the greatest honor that I get to introduce this next person. I want to thank Leland for helping me pull it off and uh, Chris Daly for sending Scott a text saying that we're all upstanding and okay people. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, not only one of my favorite singers in punk rock, but he was also one of my favorite pitchers. I grew up a baseball player and Scott, we're very close in age. And I remember when you went pro, I even have some cards somewhere. Ladies and gentlemen, Scott Rudinsky. How are you, sir? Hey, I'm hey. Great. thanks. Thanks for having me. Um, Can we do this? I don't want to. I don't want to bum everybody out, but it's a. Uh, it's about eighty degrees outside. There's blue <laughs> skies, no wind. Um, it's just a beautiful day. And, Damn, um, LA. That's so that's kind of the way it is every day. Um, yeah, but uh, God, it's great to be here. It's good to talk to everybody and uh, you know have some kind of conversation about something interesting for a while. Everybody's jumping in. It's really cool. They're, everybody's yeah. talking about Red Red Bridge Fest and everything. Um, how's things in the LA area? I know y'all had y'all had some opening up and some shows. You you were supposed to have a show the other night, but it they decided to pull it though, if I'm not mistaken. I'm not aware of that. I I, I saw there was a, a a virtual show, but that was never happening. Okay. Um, uh, you know we haven't really had anything on the books for a while. There was a show a while back things kind of started to mellow out a little bit and we were going to play an outdoor show at a place called the doll hut in orange County. And then uh, I think it was around Thanksgiving time and there was a really big surge and everything kind of started, you know, happening again. So I thought it was best to not partake and, and, uh, you know, instigate any, any issues with people, uh, gathering large gatherings. So, uh, yeah, I mean, other than that, uh, I guess sir, I have mixed feelings. Um, you know, I, I, I continue to stay safe and, and, and kind of keep my distance a little bit. Um, I, I don't know if the rest of the state does. Um, some people feel different about it. Um, I just hope we're not going too fast. I know they're getting the vaccines going. Uh, you know, I heard you mention you had one. I have, I've had one. I have another one coming up in uh, a few weeks, which I'm looking forward to. Um, it's not going to be a doozy. It's going to be easy. <laughs> and, um, <laughs> um, you know, I'm like, like you said, I mean, hopefully everything starts getting back to normal and, and, uh, I think it's just going to take time. We have to have patience before we, uh, you know, we rush things. Cause what I see, you know, I see what going on in Europe right now and, and, uh, it's kind of scary. You know, I don't want to see us go backwards. We're making some progress and there's no need to go backwards at this point. I feel the same way. I know Europe was saying something. They saw their next surge when they saw that the variant was 50% of the positive cases they were seeing. And last last report is the variants were about 40% of our cases. So we'll see what, what kind of happens with that. But I'm glad that the rollout's getting a lot faster than it was. Well, uh, Tina Tina had an interesting meeting today. Uh, guys, our, our director is Tina, my wife. Um, and she works at a nonprofit blood bank as well here in Denver. And they had a meeting today and a, uh, some scientists came in and it was basically if you had COVID and then got the vaccine, your antibodies are like 99% even against all the variants so far. So in some ways, I feel like I'm going to be a like super, super, super variant guy or something. I don't know. I, I'm, 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 I'm stoked in a way. Um, I'm also still scared. Um, I, you know, a lot of y'all know I went through COVID and it was not fun. It was literally the worst I've probably ever felt in my life. And, uh, so please, if you're out there, I know, I know everybody's talking, opening up and everything, but still be careful, still wear your mask, uh, still be cognizant, uh, cognizant of others. That's what, you know, we, like we always say, we we come from the Joe Strummer, um, Joe Strummer school of punk rock. And that's be kind, you know, uh, being, being kind is as punk as you can get. So that's a, that's what we do. Um, ah, look at there. 
we know our boy Jared popped up. Oh, I hit the wrong one. But Clinton's there too, so that's rad too. Hey. Uh, and then Jared from Counterpunch, Clinton from United Defiance, all sorts of rad punk bands jumping in to to talk to you, Scott, I'm, <laughs> as we talk away. Um, so tell us uh, what's what's coming up with. Um, oh, and here you go. You might like this one. Mm. Ah. <laughs> <laughs> I'm missing my I'm missing my drummer. <laughs> We miss your drummer too. Yeah, we we love Mr. Dally. Look, luckily, I've uh, over the over the last five to ten years, I've become really, really close friends with him, and I I, I love watching his new golf addiction. It's uh, uh, it yeah, like, that's getting a little out of hand, isn't it? <laughs> yeah, I agree. <laughs> well, it's funny to me because it uh, we laugh a lot, and a lot of people don't know this because everybody knows me from touring and the charity for so long that. A lot of people don't know that right before I came to uh, like 11 years ago, I I was in a 10 year stint as a golf pro. So, oh, wow. <laughs> um, so it uh, it's I, I don't think I know a lot of punk rockers that play golf, and it's, <clears throat> it's a darn good exercise. It's a darn good fun, and it's well, one. Hey, of I, I've I've seen so, that swing. You need to give him some tips. Oh boy, we'll get there. <laughs> Chris, we'll no. work on it. Do you yeah. think you're gonna have to have to work in a golf stops on tour? Uh, that that happens a lot. Believe it or not, no, a lot of bands. No, I'm just wondering if if Pulley is ready for that. Uh, I don't. I think Chris is our lone golfer. Really, he's our representative so he's on the just, golf circuit. Yeah. Wait, yeah. all those years playing baseball, you'd never picked up the golf bug. I'm so. not a golfer. No. <laughs> <laughs> no. I, mean, uh, I, can I, whack, I can whack a ball, but I'm no, I'm not. I'm not that's necessarily right. about it. You yeah. tell them. It's too long. It's too bad long. Ass. Like yeah. that's four long. hours. I mean, I, th I think baseball is too long, personally. So golf. It is long. It yeah. is. Baseball is really long. It's not always Flat. long, but the problem yeah. is you get into it and you don't know whether or not it's going to be long, and that gives me anxiety. Oh yeah. man, I've sat through some twenty-one inning games. Trust me, it yeah. gets it gets long. <laughs> I was about to say, as a pitcher, you sat through a lot of games, so that's. <laughs> It's actually, More than there was I participated a very specific in. Authority Zero show that ended up going like four hours longer than it was supposed to, and that sucks too. Oh, yeah. <laughs> oh, oh, oh. It may be because yeah. his arms fell off. You know? Yeah. Well, no. Well, Authority Zero wasn't still playing. I'm talking about the the hoedown where they switched oh. to Counterpunch, and then Counterpunch got stuck with Zach Quinn afterwards, and the show oh. went till 5 a.m. or something that, crazy. That, yep. That, that was a fun night. I um, like knowing when things are going to be over. I do want to. I do want to pull too. this up. Uh, Richard Wilson just joined us, and is, uh, Rich. It, Rich is one of our uh, bouncers uh, at Hogs and Heifers in Vegas, where we have the hoedown every year. And um, just to recap, if all of you guys that are watching are new, Richard was hit on his motorcycle right before COVID really got big, and lost his the lower part of his leg. He's oh, been man. he's been showing us this year the total true PMA. And he's crawling. I mean, he's up to right walking on his prosthetic already. He uh, got to sit on a motorcycle the other day. And I do want to, this is really cool. As far as I know, he just got the very first Punk Rock Saves Lives tattoo. What? Rich got, he got PLSL on his knuckles. And I don't, I don't know. He might be the first one. So that's pretty cool. Guys, let us know in the comments if you've gotten a PRSL tattoo. I mean, That's I would hope ass. that you would have already told us. Brian, uh, we Brian not to. from Bouncy Souls, he tattooed PRSL on my leg. So I, I don't want to spoil a surprise, but it is there. But it's not the logo or anything. So well, When did you get it? Did you get it before PRSL was a thing? Uh, Three three months ago, I think. Ah. Okay, all right. Leland is number one. I don't think I'm number one. You never know. Uh, I think you're this number is way one. Too you're number, number one in my heart, Leland. Oh, you're so sweet. Thank you. Matt. <laughs> Matt, uh, my best friend Matt was a, a he's a teacher in the middle of nowhere, Texas. So believe it or not, he's basically quarantined all the time because he sits in his little house and teaches the kids through the computer. He drove up here the weekend after my birthday, and we talked about um, going and getting a buddy tattoo and getting the cross hands, but we couldn't find a tattoo artist that was available that quick. So we did. plus. <clears throat> I'm jonesing for ink, but not in the middle of a pandemic. You never know. So <laughs> it's kind of kind of hard to think about. Um, 
now Leland, I know you uh, you you have some history with Scott, and I know you had some cool questions. So I'm gonna bow out and let you throw some stuff at us. So. A, a little bit, yeah. I mean, well, we so we so we talked about this like you know pre pre show, but like we we did meet in a, a plane. They were playing a bowling alley show. It sounds like it was 1997, because you have a lot better memory than I do. And but it was with Mill and Colin, and we had it. And my boss at the time had a really cool show with them. And then I don't think I saw Pulley again for the longest time. But then in, I don't know what, I, I think it was 2003 or 2004. Um, that was when I first met Jay from Music for Cancer. And then I went to go work with him to do the festivals for about 10 or 11 years of Music for Cancer once. And you came up and played, uh, and, and I know you guys came up and played that, and played like the, uh, was it Rev? Like front to back, I think? Uh, it was a few songs, yeah. Okay. Yeah. Um, that was great. That was a great show. Yeah. I just thought fun. I, Thinking back to different memories, you know, uh, San Diego, like lots of other shows, we've seen you guys play, and it's been uh, it's, it's it's been really amazing. But I did tell Marco I would wait to talk to you about the records until he was back online because he had to go put his kids to bed for like 15 minutes. So can we talk about baseball first? No, let's talk about the record. <laughs> I love uh, it. Fire away whatever you want. I mean, no, I just no, I. Just, he, he, goes, he 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 messaged me. He said, "Don't talk about don't talk about my the record. I got to put the kids to bed. I'll be back. Yeah. I want to hear." Well, let's so. let's save it then, and then we'll really surprise them. Right Dally's on. Dally with the memory there. There you go. So. Oh, okay, matters in the row songs. Right on. That's awesome. Um, so thirty so thirty three strikeouts allowed <laughs> in your or excuse me thirty three home runs allowed in your entire career. Is that right? I you sure. I <laughs> I'm not really a stat guy, um, <clears throat> um, but that sounds about right. Sure, I was remember. I'd like to think not many. I, was I can remember. remember all 33. <laughs> <laughs> I was I was remembering my first year of, uh, of 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 baseball when I was like 11, and and my dad was a pitcher, and I know he allowed more uh, more home runs than that, so. Um, yeah. <laughs> yeah, you know you know it's you know it's amazing is you, you you tend to forget the things that happened that were relatively good and or relatively bad but you remember you pretty much remember everything that was bad is what I'm trying to say. You know I right. I, I don't I don't remember uh like you're saying about I, I can remember probably just about every one of those home runs. Um I I'd have to count on my fingers and, and recall them all but I couldn't tell you if I struck a guy out in the bottom of the ninth but I can remember a home run. Yeah. You know? Yeah, that's, cool. yeah. That's, that's always tough. I, I played a lot of sports growing up, and then it's always been a part of my life. And you do remember the dumb stuff you did for, you know, well, you, you can remember taking a taking a bad hop into the face in eighth grade, but not remember you know, what you did great or something. The, the, the one thing that I never wanted to happen, and fortunately for me, it, it never happened, was be, being walked off on a visiting ballpark. Because to, to me, that's like the ultimate, you know, just devastating blow is, is you know, 30,000 people screaming at you when you give it up to the home team and you got to walk off with your head down and kind of go face your team afterwards. And thank God that never happened. Um, <laughs> when it did, we were always we were always at home and we had a chance to at least bat. So, um yeah, that that was like the one thing I always try to avoid was you know getting walked off. That's a tough one to recover from, right? Um, I yeah. wanted to, I, I wanted to ask you just uh, just just briefly about Eight Lab. If you could tell us a little bit about that, I know you guys shut the door in 2019, um, but I just heard so many cool stories about it and inductions and, and that kind of thing, and and I know not a lot of people uh, uh, know about it. But I, I was just wondering if at some point it would make potentially come back and 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 maybe younger crowd that's getting into skateboards i mean skateboards are sold out all over the country we can print up bands we can print them at all because so many kids have gotten into skating uh during this covid time um i'm curious to hear a little bit of history <clears throat> well it started uh it started back in 96 um it was an indoor skate park indoor building mm -hmm. um and you know in the beginning it I, I want to say at the time in the country, in the United States, there was less than a hundred public skate parks nationwide. And so we opened up in 96 and it was relatively, a, uh, you know, from the seventies, a lot of the skate parks that closed down, 
uh, for insurance purposes and whatnot. And there really wasn't a whole lot of uh, skating went straight in the mid to late eighties, early nineties. And, and um, so when we, when we opened this, when we opened this park, it was kind of like a cool thing. There was nothing in our community for anybody. Um, there was no real public skate parks around in the area. So we didn't, we didn't really have much competition so to speak. And, and it, and it kind of started off really good. And, and we developed a real good core of, of local kids. Um, Paul Rodriguez, Tori Pud, Pudwell, um, you know, Mike Capaldi, a lot of local kids that turned pro, uh, both skating. We had a couple bikers, um, you know, that rode BMX stuff. And it, and it just kind of lasted for, I'd say the first 10 years was really, really solid. And then over, over the course of somewhere around the 2000, early 2000s, the public parks started generating a lot of, uh, a lot of cities started building their own public parks and, and it was mm-hmm. tough to compete. It's tough to compete with a free park. And we offered a, uh, a different kind of service, I guess, you know, we were wood, not concrete. I think kids wanted concrete. Um, we tried to vary it up as much as we could, but, but it was tough to right. get people to pay. So it kind of turned in, we, we kind of considered ourselves like the Chuck E. Cheese of skateboarding, you know, because we were, we were like 13 years and younger. Once, once the kids got their, their driver's license, they wanted nothing to do with what we had. They were out exploring all the public parks that were free and, and right. you know, cre- creating havoc wherever they could. Um, but it lasted 21 years. And, um, you know, in the end, it just got to the point where uh, it was really tough to, to, to kind of keep the doors open. We never raised the rent. We never uh, we never raised the prices. Things kind of stayed the same. It just uh, the attendance declined. Um, I'm not going to say the interest declined, but but the attendance just slowly started to dissipate. And and uh, I, I wish we would have downsized and kind of focused more on the teaching and the school side of it because we had a really good niche with younger kids and teaching, like on our our Friday, our Saturday and Sunday mornings, like our uh, our skate school. We had a great instructor. And um, I think if we'd have like scaled down and focused on that in our retail shop, we probably would have survived. But um, it was just a little bit too big, and and um, eventually it was you know all good things come to an end. And it was it, you know the, and the last day was amazing. There was thousands of kids that had been coming over the years that showed up when they heard we were closing, and they were all like acting they were acting like they were bummed. <clears throat> and inside we were kind of like thinking, well, yeah, that's cool, but. Where you been? Where you know, were it's you? Like you waited, you, you waited <laughs> right. till the last day. Thanks for coming and shaking our hand and saying how rad this place was. But you know, um, it was just tough, and and um, there was other things that were involved that made it hard. Um, you know, people just get comfortable and start dipping their hands in pockets, and and um, you know, it make, makes it tough to run a business when you're when you're trustworthy. And you know, with with my occupation, I wasn't fully hands-on every second of the day but um you know uh i'm not gonna say we got burned but but it was tough and 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 i think the uh like i said like i mentioned before the public parks kind of it's tough to compete with with a free killer concrete park and i i'm sure you guys have some killer ones in the cities you live in and it's it's just it's tough you know it's really tough and tax dollars are tax dollars man i mean free money like hard for any business to compete against that um, but yeah. I, I mean, I, I guess I asked because I would think these days, like kids might be excited about being near wood after being around free for so long. Um, just one, one, one more question about that. So I had, I, I never got to go and I would have loved to go when I was a kid. I, 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 I love to skate and, um, and, uh, and I, and I, and I loved going to parks and stuff like that, but there, there wasn't a lot of, around that time. And then it wasn't until after I blew out my knees that I started seeing park parks go up <laughs> everywhere. I had, I had heard yeah was also like the uh like the skateboarding hall of fame is there is, is that right and did you guys have like you know inductions and uh and you know in a museum type of atmosphere or well we 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 started with a collection and the collection grew uh quite extensive over the years mm-hmm. um a lot of people donated you know being in southern california there was a lot of pros that would come and they would see you know stuff on the walls and, and like we i wouldn't necessarily called a museum but we had a pretty substantially large collection and um a lot of donations and and somewhere after about 10 or 15 years we we um 
we developed a nonprofit organization and 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 turned it into like the so-called Hall of Fame. And there started becoming events. And then there was a lot more pros that started getting involved. Lance Mountain, um, you know, some of the Dogtown people that started showing interest and realized it was real. And um, and, and then fans got involved. And, and, and the events started becoming a little more real. They were like these banquet dinners and they were inducting people. Um, I, sure, I mean, I don't, I don't know if we're <clears throat> responsible of, the, uh, of that. I think it was something that was kind of organically uh, gaining traction and, and deserved its, you know, in, in due time, it was going to happen. Um, maybe we kickstarted it a little bit. Um, but yeah, it was, uh, it's, it's developed into a pretty cool thing. I think, I, I mean, it's, I, I wish I could have gone. I mean, I, I know from talking to different people that it was, uh, that it was, uh, that it was exciting and that it was a positive force in people's lives. When Rob and I were on the Flog and Molly cruise, uh, we talked to Matt Hensley and, and he goes, that was like, that was like one of the best moments of my life, being inducted in the skateboarding hall of fame, and uh, and and I had so much fun. And and I look at I look back on it, it's amazing. You know, and I'm I'm talking to a guy, you know, who's toured the world and played in every city that has electricity, and and you know, I mean, his moment that he's remembering when when everyone's there, you know, bothering him for stories is is is, is that. So I think that's so cool. Did you guys keep so the collection that you have? Did you did you keep it? And you have plans at some point to display it if you can raise uh, funds for that type of a thing. Um, well, most of the collection was, was relocated into a, uh, <clears throat> a strip mall here in, in Simi. Um, and a lot of the collection was taken. Um, you know, my, wow. well, yeah, well taken and relocated. How's that? Okay. All um, right. Uh, I, I, I thought I you meant people I, like kind of grabbed it and took it. What is that? No, it was one person who okay. kind of grabbed it and took it. Um, but uh, <clears throat> as long as you can track it down, right? Yeah. Yeah. I mean, it. Whatever. I'm. I'm. Uh, I'm happy that it. That it's. That it's. Uh, that it's. Something that's going on. I'm. I'm happy that it's there. I know there's uh, some pro skaters that are looking to actually open a real museum somewhere in downtown LA, mm -hmm. Salmonaga. I, I. I don't know if. Uh, I don't know if it happens, you know, a lot of weird things have happened over the last 10, 12 months. So it's kind of slowed a lot of things down, but um, I know there was talk of that. Um, but, you know, eventually, ultimately, I think somewhere in a, <clears throat> somewhere in Santa Monica, Venice and Dogtown area, I think that probably be the, the proper place where skateboarding was born, where there would be a real right. true museum and people would take it seriously, you know? And and people would bring the stuff back because your exhibits are just on loan. You know, if you love skateboarding and they open up a place like that, you know, you'll 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 see a lot of stuff back. I would think because of people's love of the sport. Uh, you know, I think I think if if it was a real proper place and not just a building in a strip mall, uh, I think people they look at it as a collection. They don't mm -hmm. look at it as a true museum. And right. I think if it was a real proper museum that that you know wasn't owned by an individual. I think there'd be a better chance of, of it growing the way it should. Okay. I, I just have one more question for you now that, now that Mark goes back. And I was CC'd on a couple of emails, but I'm just really curious if we could hear how the, the story of, you know, uh, together for the first time and pulling matters came out on, on vinyl and, and, and what all transpired there. Um, because I think it's a really cool story and I see, I see you wearing the sweatshirt. So if you, if you could just tell us about that. <coughs> Uh, I'd love to hear. I know the two records are sold out, impossible to find, and, and I know they're going for high dollars on Discogs. So, okay, you know that's how it works. But uh, some people yeah, got left, crazy. some people didn't. But it, I mean, it's awesome that they're out, and and I I love my copies. So, um, I'd love awesome. to hear about. It. Well, um, I got a message from a guy up in Montreal, uh, a friend of mine uh, who runs shows up there. His name's Padge, and uh, he said, "Hey, this kid Marco wants to get a hold of you." And, and and of course I remember Marco was always the enthusiastic kid when we pull up you know to the venue and 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 he was like you know carrying gear and real excited and and uh, just a, a a good fan you know like and, and 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 a good guy so I said yeah pass on my information and so it's funny I I was actually driving I want to say to the last show we played in January of last year we were mm -hmm. playing a show in ba in Bakersfield California with the Youth Brigade and. Um, he called me and he said, uh, you know, uh, in his accent, you know, hello, Scott, uh, this is Marco, uh, you know, uh, uh, <clears throat> and he was telling me about this project he wanted to do. Now, this was like somewhere in 
late January, I want to say. Mm -hmm. And I was like, yeah, this is great. You know, I'll, I'll reach out to Epitaph. I'll help in any way I possibly can. You know, let's let's make it happen. And um, I was excited for him. He was starting a new label. Um, I was excited to see a couple records be released on vinyl, um, right. which is which is super exciting. And um, so we kind of started the process, and it was it was a little bit uh, challenging, you know, with Epitaph, a lawyer, back and forth emails, <laughs> and then all of a sudden, and then all of a sudden, COVID hit, and things just kind of came to a screeching halt. Um, right. Marco's contact and mine were were uh, was pretty steady, you know, through text messages and emails, and and um, you know things kind of slowed down, like the whole world slowed down there for a while, and um, and we like I said we stayed in contact, and then uh, you know he said hey I'm ready to do this again, so we we uh, we went through the whole process again with Epitaph and and uh, you know just the the determination to make it happen. Right. Um, he was pretty. He was pretty relentless with the emails. I know it was cha really challenging for him and his partner. Um, yeah. But eventually, eventually things happened, and um, next thing I know, I'm getting you know screenshots and pictures of like discs and you know these cool color variants and the artwork right. and all this cool stuff. And it's like, wow, this is it's really coming to like reality here. It's coming together. And yeah. And um, I, I know for him it was probably a nightmare. For me, on the re on the other end, it was like I just kept getting cool messages and emails go you know showing me the, the you know the updates every every few three four five days and and right. um i was i was stoked i'm sure he was pulling his hair out you know but um, right eventually eventually uh uh you know i know he was working with a few different distributors and and uh and it was it was it was a cool thing to like to be the first to to help somebody out start a label a genuine person who is you know trying to start a label for the right reason, you know, for the love of music, the passion of wanting to put out music. And, um, and he did a great job. I mean, he put out two records. He, uh, he put out some cassette tapes, which I'm betting he's going to hang on to for a while. Cause I don't know who the hell is going to buy those. <laughs> they, uh, they're back. Back. <laughs> they, they are back. It's really yeah. crazy. It's crazy. That's it's crazy. Um, I don't, get either. But yeah, I mean, it, it just, it, it, uh, it all came together and, and, uh, you know, his, uh, perseverance paid off and and it was awesome to see in the end to see you know the the final product come out and the release and then to finally receive them ourselves and and uh, and actually hold one it was it's pretty cool pretty cool i was just, i was happy for i was happy for you guys to see it come out on vinyl and i was happy for marco you know i mean he's a fan he's played in bands he's been to every show but he but he grew to love the craft too and uh yeah during the three large festivals we had and that was you know, that was gutter mouth. That was me first in the gimme gimme's. That was Pennywise. Like, uh, Marco was our, Mar you know, Marco was our, our stage manager and just one of the most professional guys I've worked with. Cause not only does he love what he's doing, but he loves everybody on stage, knows them by name, you know, knows what kind of breakfast cereal they like and remembers stories about them from years ago that even they don't remember. And so it jogs, you know, their memory. And so to see somebody that loves the music that much, um, be able to put something out like that with a band that he loves and a band that we all love was uh, was just was just quite amazing. Thank you for speaking well, of, and, and, and and you know it, I'm sorry. Go ahead. Oh no, I was just gonna say. Speaking of speaking of records, I did have actually I have a couple questions, but I have one that I want to throw in while we're no, 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 about yeah, kind of your, like your turn, the huh? history. <laughs> Are, do you think we're gonna see you ever tour or maybe re-release any of these Scared Straight records? I spoke <laughs> yesterday. Believe it or not. No, ironically should. enough with 93 year old doug moody the owner of mystic records oh my for the God. first time oh. in 35 oh, years no i spoke to him oh. on the phone and he remembered everything hello mate he's he remembered everything i helped these guys uh i want to say it was in 85 we shut down the studio in hollywood and he moved everything into a storage unit in san diego and i was one of the only guys out of all the bands that was there with the U-Haul truck and helped move this this recording studio into a warehouse. Well, it never became a studio again. And I got an email about a month ago from a guy in Europe who's looking to release everything. All the songs that were on comps, all the, you know, the seven inch, the 12 inch, anything we had ever done. So I said, well, let me uh let me try to let me try to reach out and and I I got a hold of this woman who runs the catalog and she does a mystic uh, podcast radio show or something. And she gave me Doug's number and I called him and it was 
crazy. I, I, like I said, I haven't spoke to the guy since I was 18 years old. That's and uh, it was it was awesome. That it, The conversation was awesome. We spoke for about a half an hour. And the guy's memory is sharp as a tack. He's 93 years old. Um, and uh, I have nothing but respect and love for the guy. I know there's a lot of hate from Mystic Records and a lot of the bands that you know were on the label at the time that, that have disgruntled feelings about him. Um, but uh, he said, we'll make whatever we have to happen. So I just, today, I, I introduced uh, this girl, this woman who runs the, the label to the guy in Europe and we'll see where it goes. But it's crazy you asked that at? question because it actually just happened within the last I 24 was, hours. So for, it might go somewhere. I was scared straight like a week ago. And then Rob's like, yo, we've got Scott Radinsky this week. I'm like, that's wild because I was just thinking yeah. about that. I mean, and then I realized I'm like, we're coming up on a on a pretty big anniversary for Nardcore, like yeah. major. Well, what is but, it? Forty years? Yeah. Yeah. I think it was it was what it was early '80s, right? I think it was '84, '83, something okay. around there. Yeah. That's yeah. I know they had a 30 year thing not too long ago, so it's got to be getting close to 40 or 35. Yeah gotta be yeah. and hopefully you know i mean i'm sure we'll all be at shows again by then but i was so it's like it'd be really really cool to see i mean i know you you guys like you know turned into 10 foot pole and all of that but it'd be cool to see scared straight come back for just for the for the yeah, old it'd time. be cool to re resurrect it for a night i'd love it yeah that'd be cool punk rock hoedown yeah it'd be a great time yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Hey, look at uh. look at look at mckenzie trying to get pulley to play or scared straight to play at hogs for us I think yeah. the no, I mean, it can be pulley playing. Like I'm sure we can pull Dally into it. He can learn the scared straight songs, but I want it to be scared straight, and I, only people who know will show up. It'll be well, great. I also think exactly. the, Stern, the Stearns would really jump to get that. Would be my uh, impression. And the way, the way, yeah. I well, fight Sean Stern. <laughs> I need to the, stop threatening to fight people on this thing. The way our <laughs> the way our the way our agreement works with the Stearns, they're great to us. I have to wait till they're done booking to book our shows, and that's. They let us exist and make money for the charity, but we just got to follow a couple of simple rules. And yeah. it, they've always been incredibly fair to me. So but if they get this idea from our from our stream, then it, you know, I feel like that's copyright infringement. Uh, they won't have, uh, they won't have any interest. <laughs> yeah, Dally says yeah. he'll play. Just oh, as, another band for Dally. <laughs> uh, I will I will pay for your tea time, Dally, if you make it happen. <laughs> That's care. Be careful. That's dangerous in in, in uh, Las Vegas. Those are not cheap courses. <laughs> I'm I'm sure of it, but you know, some things are worth it, right? And now the even Richard's going crazy. If Pulley would play the PR, the hoedown would be the if uh, Scott. You probably don't know much about it, but Dally's played almost every year for us with Authority Zero. We do a we do a show during punk rock bowling called the Punk Rock Hoedown at a bar there in town called Hogs and Heifers. They give us the bar for the weekend. We book in punk rock. It's not normally their thing, but they embrace us and it's become a tradition. And the Stearns even publicize it for us and work directly with me to, they've even helped me get bands, like at the end of their booking, the last few bands that they were trying to get that they just run out of room for, they give me the option to book. It's pretty, it's a pretty great relationship and then we uh we're also going to be the main so fun yeah we're also going to be the main charity in the in the uh, main festival we've always been in the festival uh, but we're doing a punk rock saves lives like little village in the festival going forward where we have yeah four to I want to say I want to say I watched that it was it was it was like it was streaming online last year wasn't it for yes, sir. twelve hours you, or something yeah we, yeah y'all gave us a song you did a That's you did right. a Brady That's Bunch right. video for us. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, a Brady yeah. Bunch video. Yeah, it was great. It yeah. was insane. That was, awesome. that was, it was good. It was a an amazing honor. I mm -hmm. I was sitting there going, I can't believe one of my favorite bands just gave us a song, and it was it was crazy. It's 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 been great. At you know the, it's a great fundraiser, but we had, we switched and did it online when we had to cancel everything, and we had to do it on right. a different weekend because the Stearns did do a punk rock bowling. Uh, stream too, so we let them have their normal weekend, and we moved to like the weekend after. Or something. It was, but I it was. We so done ours at three a.m. like we usually do. Yeah, are you are you guys planning on doing it again this year? Or? Uh, if if yeah, everything's looking that way. The the bars already called me saying uh, that, and all the bands that we had booked last year 
I'm going to give all of them first rights unless the Stearns book them. And then I'll fill in the holes once we get that all figured out. I'm giving the only, the only place that will happen is in Vegas, right? Yeah. Well, Rob's talking about I in mean, September yeah. when Punk Rock Bowling happens, but do you think we'll do live stream this year for Memorial Day weekend? Uh, maybe we haven't, we haven't really talked about it. It was a lot of work last year. I, I, I don't know if I would want, uh, another 12 hours of being the live host on the live stream and my yeah. wife on the backside, trying to get it all in the computer and all streaming have something to talk to you about later. Just, uh, anyway, brought that up as an S for everybody watching. Um, so speaking of just kind of all of our wild, super wild lives, I feel like punk is a very specific sort of lifestyle and feeling that people outside of it don't ever seem to understand, even when it feels really normal to us. So what is, if you had to say like one thing that your baseball family doesn't understand about your music life at all and vice versa, what does your music family not understand about your baseball life? Like where is the, where is that disconnect when you're having a conversation or... Um, it's kind of funny. Like, I, I think the baseball world knows absolutely nothing about the music life. Um, I mean, you're but on the music tour life, no. Yeah, but but it's a totally different. Uh, it's a different personality. Um, you know, I I can remember sitting in the bullpen. I always use this as a story. It's like you know, I'm sitting in the bullpen. Let's say in April, the start of the season. And I'm kind of thinking about what I did the last four months. You know, a month ago, I was sleeping on a floor somewhere in Berlin. And, and like, there's no chance in hell that this guy sitting next to me can relate to that. You know, he was sitting in a tree stand hunting a deer or something <laughs> or fishing, you know, or playing golf. And, 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 you know, the guys in the band that I've been in the band with uh, a little bit, they have a clue of what's going on with baseball and they, they're kind of a little aware of it and, and I'm not going to say super fans, but um, they've always been aware of it. And, and um, it's just kind of a different conversation. Like they, they understand, I think that world a little more than the baseball world ever understood the punk rock world. I, they just, it's, they just don't, they don't know. And now, now granted, like in, in the mid nineties, things kind of changed a little bit. When I first started playing, I mean, it was the typical cliche, you know, like what you're in a punk rock band. What does that kill your mom, kill your dad? Yeah. That's what it's about, you know? And, and I would just walk away laughing going like you fucking idiots, you know? Um, <laughs> Not even worth but, the effort. Uh, yeah, seriously. And like, and like a, a, a sports reporter um, asking me a question about my rock band, I would just kind of like, eh, okay, you know, you don't, you don't, you don't do homework. You don't know a whole lot. Um, but on the music side, once it kind of became a little easier for me to deal with, I, I think the advent of the internet, I was I wasn't able to hide behind anything anymore. So now it was all open, and and, and like the music world knew everything about because it was kind of taboo. Like, what? You're a baseball player? Can't be? In a, can't play baseball and be in a punk rock band? You know, I was never a jock. Uh, I just played baseball, and. Um, so so once the once that kind of got exposed it was tough to hide and and the questions became a little bit more valid i guess you know they kind of were able to do a little more history and research so it it was a little more tolerable and i wasn't so scared to talk about it because yeah. it was it was out there you know um dally, but dally yeah there are two story. different worlds yeah that, dally claims you have a story about playing a show in a bar in phoenix during spring training couple of times yeah yeah i don't know yeah, we've, just put up we've a done comment. it a few times like, ask him about yeah, he... ask him about both worlds colliding in a small punk bar yeah that was cool um you know there's been a few different times um i can remember opening day in chicago 1992 we uh we, we played a few shows with no effects and Lagwagon when Lagwagon was on their first u.s tour and uh it was still technically scared i might have been 10 foot pole at the time i'm not sure but it was right around that period when the name was changing and uh, we played Chicago, we played Milwaukee, and, you know, I had a baseball game that day, and so I left, you know, I left 15 tickets for, you know, both bands to come, opening day, hang out, and it was cool. At the new, at, it was, must have been 91, it was at the new baseball field, so it was kind of cool. Um, and then, you know, there's been some shows in, in spring training, and um, that was cool. You know, had some guys in the, up to see you. There's a good question. Some guys did, yeah. Some of the guys did. Um, uh, we've played some shows. I, I know when I was with the Dodgers here in L.A., we 
there was a few times we had shows booked where, uh, you know, after a day game, I'd go to a club and play a gig and a couple guys in the team that, you know, certain select guys that I knew could hang. I would, yeah, you got to check it out. And, and they were totally cool with it. And they had a great time. Uh, That's awesome. But yeah, yeah, a good time. Gun to your head, if you had to pick, uh, what's more exhausting, baseball practice or band practice? Well, I don't know if either is exhausting. Um, I definitely <laughs> go to bed at night after band practice with some ringing in my head. Um, <laughs> uh, but yeah, I mean, they're, I guess you get accustomed to both, you know. Uh, we, we don't really have band practice anymore, so it's hard to say. I've, I've practiced a lot on my own, and, and, and I, sh I certainly get winded. Every time we get a new drummer in the band, he wants to play faster and faster and faster, so it makes it harder to keep up, you know. Um, but uh, and I guess the older you get, the harder it is to uh, catch your breath, you know. That's fair. Yeah. And there's the drummer making a comment again. Yeah. So. Yeah, I, and Nick says he has tinnitus too. And I'm like, I think most of us have some form of tinnitus going on. Our, so that's just part oh, of sure. part of the life before. Well, even now, with I don't understand. You know, Scott, are you still a are you still a stage monitor person, or are you yes. uh, in air? Yeah. Okay. No. I don't understand. People are like the inner ears are better, and I'm like, but are they? I mean, I get you could hear everything, but are they damaging your hearing? as much i don't know i kind of wonder I, that so. i use the eargasm earplugs and they are in my opinion phenomenal i i hated i, I tried different kinds of earplugs i always hated them <clears throat> uh the foam ones can screw off forever especially um haven't tried the actual like molded like inner ear ones but i really enjoy that i feel like i can have, have a conversation and actually hear the band with the eargasm ones and definitely deal with less ringing but that's just me that's just me as a fan i don't know about when you're playing or not but i got those for maggie too she loves them yeah uh, they uh my, my my theory like when you're playing like if you it, I, mean, I don't i've used i've used in-ears and, and, and experimented with them and it's just it's just not my thing i know putting earplugs in there's no way you can hear everything that's going on there's no way mm -hmm. so i mean as a fan to listen I, it's the smartest thing in the world you can you can you can hear everything kind of a little clearer, but to be in a band and to actually play on stage with earplugs, I, I just don't believe you can hear everything. You need to, in my opinion, <clears throat> you need to expose it and, and, and take in the loudness. <laughs> the steer into the skin. Hey, the, the, one, the one thing that I will say it, um, over the last five, 10 years as more people have switched to in-ears, um, one of my favorite things, and I've been lucky enough to, to witness it, I because I've seen thousands upon thousands of shows growing up and going to every show I could go to of almost every form of music, but I was out in the crowd and right in the front of the stage, whatever. As I've gotten older and I tour with all these bands, I can watch from the side of the stage or kind of off to the back a little bit, and I really enjoy seeing the different um angle and seeing it as more of as the performers seeing it watching the crowd react but as everybody switched to in ears you're standing back there to watch a different thing and you don't hear anything it's like yeah. everybody's in their ears and you're like there's no stage sound coming back at me and that's kind of weird but <laughs> it's uh but i do people there's there are people chiming in that saying they do not hurt your ears actually one of uh one yeah. of our good, so I guess they are better than stage sound, but I just, I'm the old. Hey, at t Verizon, you know, it's like, take your pick, you know? Yeah, exactly. Everybody, I like, I like everybody's, got their, everybody's got their own thing. I remember going home with that ringing in my ears, just thinking that was the best, it was the best night of my life, you know? So, it's great. Uh, yeah. It's great. I do, pay I do price, hate it. Pay the price later, but yeah. It's great. yeah. Live the fast, first time but... it happens to me again is going to be wild. I think, you know, because it's yeah. been over a year now since I've been to a show. So I feel like the first time I feel that ringing again is going to be, I don't I don't know how I'm going to react to it. You're going to love I'm just it. Happy, you know, I mean, I'm still going to be like, Rob, old punk rockers don't die. They just stand at the back and like nod, you know. I already stand at the back. I stand next yeah. to the sound booth. It sounds great. It's awesome. 
<laughs> yep. aren't running into me, spilling their and beer you don't on me. Boot to the face or get punched in the head as much, which were, you know, they were glory wounds. I feel like. to choose when I get hit or choose when I do the hitting. You know, it's like, I like it just happening. Well, I've been there and I'm, I think McKenzie has, but we're here in Denver, we're lucky to have Red Rocks. And if you've ever gone to a concert there, um, a lot of people are like, gotta get to the front. And I'm like, no, you want us, you honestly want to sit from row about 12 to 30. Right in there is just the perfect sound. And it can be for any band. I mean, they had, they did the Punk and Droplet shows there. And it's just something about, about where the soundboard is at Red Rocks, even though it's almost a perfect sounding venue. That's the every venue girl. you want to be nice to soundboard. That's my opinion. Except the only time I was at Red Rocks, I was actually on stage um, and backstage, and I didn't actually experience it from. So I still need to knock that off my bucket list. I actually met you, Dan. Was it, right? it is. You gave him a Frank Turner set list for me. <laughs> As mosh pits go, and one of the I love about doing shows in Canada is that everyone is so so friendly you know oh, oh um, sorry oh, oh yeah no no it's not just that it's like well so my we were in canada for a completely different reason but wound up because we were invited by the, the checkout heavy montreal i didn't know them and i got to say hi to everybody and it was and if and, and if you don't everyone else is mad at you and they and they and they shun you super you know super friendly people and it's been that way at uh been that way at redbridge fest um and, uh scott whenever we can pull it off uh was 2020 opened yeah 2021 now 2022 and can people get vaccinated and will they open the borders so you're allowed to come is the question yeah. but i mean hopefully yeah. we'll get to see that happen soon red bridge and your other fest to, to table and do some right now we can't cross like geez you know and i've been decided ever since i saw the lineup because you guys are playing and less jake's playing and bouncing souls are playing and it's just going to be great um and i keep waiting for you know, good news. And then I get, and I started, start, start, sort of start getting like people going out and hanging out. I'm like, stop, wait, everybody yeah. thoughts. And then, then I'll get to, I'll get to do my shows. And then we have another one in August, uh, called rock, uh, called rock, Look cause, um, that's going to be really cool too. And we have face to face out to play and, uh, Dave Ferris and Billy talent and kill switch engage. And, and now we don't know if it's going to happen or not. So it's like, Oh, come on, please. I want to see, I want to see my friends and, and, and people that I love play again. So, Patience. Yep, and patience and uh, being uh, adamant to your fellow man to go get your shots, please. Um, yeah. The more of you that get it, the more we can get the so-called herd immunity. Actually, be in a herd again. That'll be a that'll be a fun thing. Even though I don't jump in that many anymore, but every once in a while you got to still. Yeah, your body hurts the next day, but that's okay. A cool gig. I, I want to say it was a Flaming Lips. They were all in like these big balls. Did you guys see that? Yep. Yeah. yeah, they yeah, did. That was kind of cool. I, I thought, want to pick I thought that was going to be the future. <laughs> yeah, I definitely like want to pick all yeah. everything I don't like about it because yeah. I love hitting and there. But we've all got you know, no one enjoys being covered in other people's sweat. So pretty, yeah, pretty stoked. I'm gonna get one of those. I'm gonna get one of those hamster ball things. <laughs> I don't care if nobody else is wearing them, but I'm gonna get my own. Just being a walk around the street in your own sweat, right? Yeah. Why not? You know, at least I know where I came from. Right. <laughs> yep. Exactly. I I wouldn't. Don't well, watch out for her. She, <laughs> next thing you know, you're on the ground, and someone's yeah. helping, and hopefully yeah. someone's helping you up, right, Layla? So. Yeah. 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 Well, okay. I'll pick you up on the next round around. It's fine. Hey, well, well, I can't believe it, but we've hit like 55 minutes already, and since there's five of us, I'll go ahead and start doing the wrap ups to kind of close us out. We used to go an hour, hour to 15 minutes. So that'll give us time to talk about this and Vance. So I'll start with the other guys to give you a few seconds to think. Um, uh, every week I ask our panel what you've been listening to, uh, reading or a podcast or something like that that's helped you through the last few weeks of being isolated and being away, uh, help keep your spirits up. Um, that might can help the people watching they could check it out and it might help them going forward. Uh, let's start off this week. Leland, you're the, you're the guest guest host. So <laughs> what, what, what's Leland, what's been blowing Leland's uh, ears up? What's been going on? Uh, uh, music wise. Um, I, I, I've been listening to it. So, so, I work, so I work at home, work from home, work in a lot of boring financial forms. And so like anything I can have music in the background, that's just uh, cool or interesting. 
Um, sometimes fast, sometimes slow. You know, I love it. I, I, I've been really into like uh, this soundtrack that I, I put together. That's all the music from uh, from the Umbrella Academy uh, shows. Um, I love the mix of like just you Dude. know. Um, oh my god! Series pulling me around when they write that soundtrack. Wranglers, and it had the Clash, yeah. and it had it had Irma Thomas, and right. amazing, just amazing. Sorry, so, I got really excited. There's some like website, like that's like fan fan website. I've been rolling that, and then I, I have to give a, a, a shout out to uh, uh, a friend here, and that's uh, Scott Reynolds from All uh, put out this amazing record called Chihuahua and Buffalo. Buffalo, yes, sir. And the Chihuahua is, of course, uh, Justin Bieber or Jabes or Jabers, yeah. I guess. JB. We, he, nicknames. But uh, but I but I love uh, I love Scott. I love Janet. I love Jabers. I love their pictures, and the and and the record is amazing. And it's got some of the just some of the funnest songs on it. J- uh, Jillian Anderson, yeah. should go on a date with me. That's like my favorite song of the whole week. So, yeah, check that out if you get a chance. It's I don't know that his site advertised it, but I found it on iTunes for like nine ninety nine. So it's you know. It's there. It's a, uh, but it's it's a really fun record. I do have to segue there though that Leland brought up Scott Reynolds, and I was waiting to do it later in the show, but this would be the perfect point, ladies and gentlemen. Next week on this show, guy, amazing artist, and from I haven't honestly <laughs> had the repeated people, just an amazing human too. So that's a. But certainly not least, I have been jamming the hell out of my Foley records, and I don't give a fuck what they're worth on Discog sealed. <laughs> Right on, and uh, thank you, Scott, for, for being on here with us. All right, well, Dan, what's about a purchase? And it didn't explain what it was and until I got it in the mail. And they gifted for the usual $7 uh, their new single that they just released, Ration. And it's uh, pretty kick ass for them to do that. And uh, I've been blasting that nonstop in Leland. You'd love it because it has Ghost Note symp- Symphony's version of Oh, that's cool. So that's awesome. Uh, I, I'm leaning on Leland a little. He's he's supposedly trying to talk to them about punk rock saves us. So let's let's hope. Let's yeah. Fingers crossed. All right. Uh, any other things, Dan? What's? No, it's been about it. Uh, that's Sounds cool. Just repeating that. Yeah. Sometimes you get that new CD or new record or new vinyl and you play it on repeat, 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 and it. It, I, I mean, I re- that's probably why I know so many lyrics from 80s, 90s, and 2000s songs is I literally just kept on playing in my car all the time. And mm-hmm. it just stuck in I your did. head. What's going on down there? What's going on? Oh, man. Um, you know, I've been working I've been working a lot up until this week with the baby. Um, I've been I've been on an oi kick. Just, I don't know, something, I think it still has, I think it has something to do with the fact that I booked my punk rock bowling hotel, and I'm, like, definitely feeling those kind of, kind of ways. Got, uh Dark Lay, Lion's Law, all the Booze and Glory, definitely spinning all those guys quite a bit. That might be why I'm threatening to fight Sean Stern, but, uh, <laughs> Boots and braces. Yep. Exactly. Boots and braces. Lots of braces. Matter of fact, uh, Matt, my best friend, when he was up here, we ducked over to buy. I, uh, I took a job driving a truck during this, um, and we moved very heavy coolers. And I was like, man, I, I actually need some work boots. I, I've had Doc Martens my whole life. I wear them. So I called, and the shop, the one shop here in town that has real selection of Doc Martens, check out Fashion Nation if you get a chance. If you need to order, they'll send them right to you. They Great selection, great prices, uh, of and independently owned, really red. But he had the OSHA Steel Toe Docs so nice. in my size. So we went over to get them. And Matt asked him because he's been wearing suspenders as a teacher. And he asked the, the shop if they had any suspenders in. And all they had were two pair of braces. And Matt was like, uh, I can't do that at school. <laughs> he wanted, like, professor suspenders, you know. No, we got we to get Oh, there he is. There he is. He wanted to buy the – Matt just showed up. Look at there. <laughs> He tried to get me to buy the Hello Kitty docs. Yes, that is oh, true. Oh, thanks for trying, Matt. Couldn't convince I think we all yeah. would have enjoyed that. Definitely more than Rob would. I think. Remember, I think, kids, boots and braces don't make a racist. Exactly. That's what I'm ending with. Um, all like right. That. It's it's very That's true. Good. It's nice. it's it, I I I've always hated, and there's a documentary. I I just actually found it. I was going to watch it this week um, about. I forgot what it's called, but it's about um, how race, uh, how 
the skinhead culture has to live down the bonehead culture. And there's, it's not fair because I think I've they, seen, I think I've seen what you're talking about, but I can't think of the name of it either. They totally appropriated a look mm-hmm. and not what skinhead culture was really about. So I mean, it started uh, with Jamaican working class people. I mean, all, if, in all honesty, we can, we can have an entire, entire session on this. I don't know if people want to stick around for another hour to hear me rant about the history of skinheadism, but there you go. Well, uh, Scott, has there been anything that that's been blowing you up that you can pass on to people? Reconnected with this old friend of mine that I went to high school with. Uh, his name's Fred Trujillo, and he's living in Portland, Oregon right now. He played in a band in the, I want to say the '90s with his sister called Family Affair, and they had a they had a couple of big hits. Like they were like it was mainstream hits. It was uh, like kind of like sly and the family stone funk kind of music and it was her husband fred's brother-in-law uh, <clears throat> he's put out a few records or a few few releases over the last few decades i guess and um he put out this recent one it's called sketch of a man and it might not be for everybody but uh it and i don't know if it's out yet it's it's i i, I have this special pass to listen to it on soundcloud um, but he actually played in a band with Pat Smear after the germs somewhere around the mid eighties. And, um, it's different. It's, uh, it's kind of folky. It's, uh, but it's really cool, man. And, be, and because I know him, uh, I, I just, I love the lyrics. He actually wrote a song called see me Valley about our hometown. And, um, it's just a lot of the stuff he talks about and a lot of the songs I can totally relate to. There's a few acoustic ballads that he just pours his heart out into and and it, it's really catchy it's really really good and then there's a couple of like uh you know maybe uh like sly sly type songs uh you know sly and the family stone or uh you know some of those kind of funk type feel to him he he's done a few uh spanish uh like los lobos kind of records the guy's amazing amazing songwriter amazing musician and uh he went for a little bit of a different route on this one and, and the songs kind of get to me and I've been, my kid, my kid busts my balls and says, man, you're, you're going to be responsible for all these listen, you know, all for all the, uh, whatever they call it on the, uh, it went from like 60 to like, it's up to like a hundred now listens and it's all been because of me, you know, cause I just keep listening and listening and listening. But, uh, yeah, that's kind of what I've been listening to the last, uh, probably like what, the last two weeks. What's the record called? It's called, well, he calls himself Trujillo. And Real? it's called Sketch Sketch of a Man. Sketch of a Man. Wow. That sounds yeah. cool. Totally check It is out. pretty cool, man. I mean, and, and you know, when you know somebody, it makes you a little closer to it anyway. So it's, uh, maybe that's it's why I've got it. to listen to, yeah. yeah. <clears throat> it's great, man. It's great. I love the guy. That's awesome. Um, and that's yeah. that's the, the best way to promote now is tell your friends about what's what's blowing you up. That's that's incredible. So I uh uh, things for me to tell you to check out this week. Um, I've actually worked 30 hours in the first three days of the, <laughs> cause we've, uh, we have a president visit coming and uh, we've been running coolers all over the state of Colorado. I've been in more like little cities in the middle of nowhere in the last few days than I couldn't believe. But, um, it, uh, so I've been listening to. I, I, I've been listening to a lot of news since the shooting here, obviously. Um, the, the Boulder shooting, the, the 10 people passed. Um, I need, I, I'm a news junkie and I needed to know, especially as close, you know, Boulder to us is like saying, um, if you're a Nashville area person like Murfreesboro, it's the college town, 45 minutes to an hour away. And it, it's, it's basically part of your city, even though it's its own city. Um, Denver and Boulder have a distinct love affair. And so all my thoughts have been with those people, um, the whole city of uh, Boulder, as well as the Denver area are, are, are down about that. Um, no matter what you believe in guns, I, I, I don't really care, but please think about a human life. Um, it's not, that's, it's, I don't know what was going on. They can't, they haven't pinpointed on this guy yet, whether it was any kind of uh, racist or anti something or anything. They just think he might have snapped um, because there's no distinct what he was aiming for. The people that passed away were 
the youngest was 20 and the oldest was 55. Um, we obviously know the Atlanta area thing happened just a few days before that. Um, so keep your head down, talk to your friends, everybody check on everybody. Maybe this kid, no one checked on him. I don't know. Um, I should take but, a minute to say if there's any, if there's ever a great time to say everybody should see a therapist, it's, it's now, you know, I mean, if people can just snap, I don't, I'm sure you've seen this kind of running around the internet, but I don't want to keep living every day knowing that me or a loved one could die because somebody had a bad day. You know what I mean? And it's just really hard. And Denver specifically has a very, very long and hard relationship with mass shootings. I mean, yep. you know, I mean, Denver kind of started it uh, yeah, we, for a lot of us in our generation. And That's part of what they've been saying is Denver's murder rate for the regular, regular time is actually one of the lower in the country, but we are unfortunately prone to these mass events, um, the Colorado front range area. So, um, so my, my beg there is to just think about your fellow human. Um, and that can go with COVID that can go with not pulling a gun on someone, not, not yelling at, you know, someone makes a dumb move in traffic. You might go, Oh, you dummy, but that let it, leave it at that. You know what I mean? That's that's part of all of this. We can uh, we can all choose to be kind. Uh, just just wake up every morning and remember that. That's what I'm begging of you. Um, Get yourself a plan to decompress too. You know, I mean, I know it's. I mean, I'm not gonna lie. I flipped somebody off driving just today, and I didn't need to do that. And I'm in a city where the murder rate is actually really really high, and that that could have ended me. You know, but if you know, we just could all. As, as often as we can, just ha be intentional and stop and think and breathe and just have a plan of, hey, what do I do when I start feeling like I'm like I'm angry? Stop and breathe, you know, before you react to something, before you say something that you can't take back or do something that you can't take back. And Nick's been with us the whole night. He just posted, as a barber, he encourages people to get the trouble off their chest. He's free therapy. And people listen. It's, you know... Yeah. The right people, your friends will listen, your barber, your, you, you never know who you, you know, you could be talking to the person that might. Drummer. Yeah. <laughs> you know, anybody who's listening, like, doesn't have to be like, you know, not everybody can afford therapy, but just reaching out and talking to each other because it, it helps. It and we, you know, we are pushing our mental health. At, um, and Dan is, Dan and Tina are on the forefront of that with us. And, uh, all, uh, all of our people that are working on the PRSL mental health side. Um, there is a group, uh, put it up again, Dan. We encourage you to join our mental health group on Facebook. It's an open safe space where you can talk about anything. Um, we're being very vigilant to keep it an open, safe space. So people can, you can ask if you need to just get something off your chest. There's a there's hundred, uh, how many people do y'all have in it now, Dan? We've got well over 500. Okay. There's 500 people that are willing to listen and give you some words of encouragement or how they handled a similar situation. No judgment. Um, and that's a beautiful thing. There's The pandemic has put a lot of stress on us. Mental health is at a breaking point in the United States right now and, and all over the world. So take, a, take it. Use, I, I always, Dan will agree, use us as your first step. If you... Yeah want if you want to explore therapy you don't know how to go about it please reach out to us we will find and help you find the right path for you um we we may not be professionals but we can be that friend and that first step to help you out may is mental health awareness month and we're working on some great shows for you in may um i know i just dan i just booked foundation 45 they will be doing a whole one of these with us um and then uh we're, we're talking to your friends uh, also. Um, my brain just went numb. Uh, music Minds Matter? Yeah, Music Minds Matter. We're talking to them about doing one of these with us as well. Um, so we're going to have a lot of cool content for you. We've got a, a, a bunch of artists are already sending us videos. So we're going to have a bunch of videos for you from all of the Punk Rock Saves Lives artists that, and influential people telling you that it's, it's okay to... It's okay to therapy is not a bad thing anymore. And if you need help, please take it. We're there. And other people are there. 
Um, so, um, got a little heavy there for you. I'm sorry, but it, it needed to be say, uh, let's stop Asian hate. Let's stop Black Lives Matter. Let's make sure Black Lives Matter because not all lives like matter. Yep, there you go. Um, when, there's a lot of, a lot of, with the, there's also a huge movement, the women. So let's, let's make sure we honor and lift up our women and be an ally and learn how to be a better person. So um, I've been, I, and I posted something today. I'm a white CIS male. Um, we don't rule the world, guys. We really don't. And we've got to all learn to stand up and say that. Um, we got to put everybody on an equal pedestal. So please do that. Um, that's not political. That's human being. So um, other than that, my last thing I do every week, and that's only – Leland has done this. So you don't have to do it this time, Leland. Uh, Scott, where do you think your life would be today had you not found punk rock music? Oh, boy. Um, well, I mean, it saved my life. You know, it kind of really saved my life. The period of time I was going through it, my dad was uh, was terminally ill with cancer. And um, it was uh, it was everything to me. And it's 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 been uh, it's been everything to me for the last 40 plus years. And um, it's got a special place in my heart forever. And um, you know all the people that I've met, the, uh, the the opportunity, the music I've been able to create, and places I've been able to explore and 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 see, it's uh it's it's everything to me. That's awesome, and that's why we exist, guys. And Scott, I want to, I'll start by saying thank you. I'm sure the rest of them want to say thank you, but you mean a lot to us. And uh, when uh, we do find out what's going on with punk rock bowling if it's really going to happen and if the sterns don't ask you i promise you we'll be going through the alley to see if you oh, oh. i thought everyone was frozen except for me for a second no really no weird. you froze there but everybody froze it was a oh. but, uh, i think it was just robin scott froze uh, there we go. And then everybody started moving slowly. It was just wild. I was telling Scott, I don't know if you could, if y'all heard the part, if the Stearns don't book uh, Pulley and uh, for Punk Rock Bowling, if it happens, we're going to hit him up for... Uh, well, the Stearns can have Pulley and we get scared straight. There we go. That would work I too. I like it, yeah. That's the plan. Right. Got, you'd have to handle two sets on a weekend. Can you do that? Easy. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's easy. All right. Uh, Leland, did you have any closing thoughts, my friend? Oh, just, uh, you know, I echo what you said. I just, you know, try to try to be kind to people. You, you know, you never know what else is going through. And uh, it's easy to say that. And sometimes not always, always easy to follow my own advice. Yeah, I want to flip people off when they cut me off. I want to, you know, but I, but I, but I, but I try to remember, you know, I try to remember that, 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 you know, that idea. That like, you know, I could be having the worst day ever and no one would know it if I didn't share it with them, you know, and then so could someone else to just, you know, smile and, and, and try to be kind to people and uh, you know, try to help where uh, try to help where there's a need. I mean, that's uh, it's it's uh, not, not always easy to do. But, um, you know, if, if you if you're open and uh, you're open to listening to people, a lot of times you'll hear stuff and, and it'll just stand out to you. And um, yeah. And uh, thank you. Thank you, Scott, for coming on. I can't wait to have you guys play for us, whether that's in Vegas or or whether Canada comes before that or after that or or, or whatever. But I'm looking forward to seeing you, uh, seeing you guys, uh, seeing you guys play again and uh, jam out. And I can't wait. So thank you, thank Mackenzie. You. What? Any closing thoughts? I think that's kind of it, guys. Go out, go forward, do everything you do with love, and we will see you next week. Dan? Reach out for any of your needs. We are here. So just like Rob told me, post it in the group, post it in the comments. Please join. We are here for anything you need. And Scott, I want to ask one more question that has been a repeated question in the comments. Um, did, is there any talk of new pulley? 
We've gotten that question about six times. So any new pulley talk? Yep, there sure is. Aha. Uh -huh. There. There you go. There's a little teaser for you. Yeah. And, and 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 I might add multiple. Oh, oh. pulley. <laughs> oh. Okay. So exciting. Heck Love yeah. it. Uh, nice. There's, there's our little scoop for the week. Um, yeah. Guys, I say it every week. We're here for you. We love you here. Uh, one, uh, and I close it out every week with one love up the pumps. That's more words than that, but you get my meaning. Everybody have an amazing guys. Have a wonderful night. Scott Reynolds next week. Check us out. We love y'all. Have a great night. Thank you. Take care. Thanks again.